Welcome everyone to another Observability Clinic. It's another App Spotlight Security Investigator app. It's an app that we have announced at Perform. It's coming out in April. You can see the GA is going to be with uh, 288. And I uh, invited the product manager, the lead product manager for this, uh, Tit. Hi, how are you, Tit? Yeah, hello. Nice to be here and then talk about our latest invention, the Investigator app. Yeah. Hey, we always do this very quick. So can you start just uh, giving us an overview of why we built that Investigator app, what use cases it supports and who is it for? And then maybe walk us through the app and then show us a live demo. Yeah, definitely. I would be really happy to do that. So to kick off, yeah, as, as you know, and as you have seen in the previous observability clinic episodes as well, Dynatrace is, is perfect for, for fast security investigations. So, so we have a grail that you have introduced and then what, uh, what we have seen, which provides the, the speed and scalability when fetching data from our data lake house. And, and uh, that, that is like the basis for all investigations. Uh, additionally, we have DQL, the query language and DPL, which will provide you the flexibility and precision uh, when fetching the data and doing those analyses. And, and uh, we won't go into too much detail about DQL here because I, I also believe that we have several other episodes that discuss that. Mm -hmm. But but just keep in mind that the, this is the biggest advantage when talking about security use cases uh, and uh, and stuff that you have, that flexibility and uh, the possibility to get the fine-grained data when investigating stuff and, and yeah, finding the important stuff mm -hmm. from the irrelevant. And now we will provide the third ingredients, which will be the security investigator, which will provide the usability for, for security use cases precisely. So, so basically, we are aiming towards security use cases and provide you the functionality or the platform where the security investigators or uh, OPSEC guys who deal with, uh, with uh, security-related queries, for example, can, uh, can perform their activities in the most comfortable way possible, providing the automations at hand as well. So we are, we are intending on creating this or designing the tool or query-based evidence-driven security use cases like threat hunting or, or incident solving or forensic investigations where you want to analyze the data in Grail using DQL from the security point of view. So we are, we're building it towards security analysts, but, but it's still usable for every, uh, by everyone because, uh, well, if you consider you know, knives, for example, then we're not building like a universal tool like a Swiss Army knife, which is universally... Uh, mediocre for every use case. We are like focusing mainly on the security things, but you can still uh, use it for everyday use cases as well. So imagine like a meat knife or something. We, we design it for meat, but you can still slice tomatoes or bread or whatever you yeah. want, if that makes sense. Yeah, so. it's a nice analogy. Thank you so much. And also a recap, yeah. uh, as you were correctly uh, pointing out, there's a lot of different videos out there in case you want to get familiar with DQL. We have a complete YouTube channel on DQL and we will all link to those in the description of this video. Yeah, perfect. Uh, but yeah, coming back to the security investigator app, uh, with the first release that we are announcing in the beginning of April, or as I mentioned with 288, uh, we are introducing a totally new uh, approach to the navigation within an investigation. And I will briefly talk about why we are doing that as well. We are showing the ability to go deeper into the raw data that you have in, in, in Grail, so you can analyze it in a more detailed way and get response from, from Grail in a, in a more detailed way. And we will provide the simple evidence management uh, to, to persist your findings and to reuse those findings when uh, performing your investigation or creating additional DQL queries when investigating your, your use cases for, or, or an incident, for example. And yeah, so to introduce the, the app, this is what it looks like, mm -hmm. and I will go into more detail when we are discussing the demo as well, or showing the demo. And um, and yeah, going through the components, on the right side you see the, the navigational part, which I will talk uh, in a more detailed way in just a minute. In the middle you see the details. So imagine double-clicking on, uh, on any of the rows or records that you have in the results table. It will open up the details of the specific row. So all the fields are visible in on the screen at, at once. So basically, you can go into more details uh, when when uh, when analyzing your result sets without uh, having to click basically back and forward or closing the model. You see the arrows up there. You can basically mm -hmm. move between the, the records as well to, to see the details of the next result set, for example, mm -hmm. and so on. And the third component is the, is the evidence module where you can now persist your IP addresses or string uh, indications of compromise, for example, or, or whatever kind of evidence you, you will find. You can create new evidence and then that, and, uh, new evidence to existing collections and so on and so forth, which I will go into more details in the demo as well. 
So yeah, this is what it looks like. And I'm, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm quite aware that it might be overwhelming when looking at first, but I, I will guarantee it makes sense when using it. So <laughs> I would think that the demo will, 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 will demonstrate as well. But yeah, coming back to the to the to the to the navigational component, why we're doing this? So yeah, how threat hunting works, or 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 how usually uh, we see a threat hunting use case, even when reading a Dynatrix blog, uh, when we talk about some investigations or some findings, uh, we expect it to be a linear process. And uh, and uh, the we, when we read the blogs, we see that all the actions that the investigators do are thought through and they execute queries one by one, see a result and then continue with the next query. And all the activities are, are sequential ones because well, we have that understanding when we read the blogs. And why we have that understanding? Well, it basically comes from, from, uh, from uh, three aspects. First of all, attacks after they have been done, they seem linear. So imagine an attacker attacking our system they will come and penetrate the firewall. Then they will take over the application. They will laterally move to the database, extract some data or do some magic there. So activities are sequential. And when investigators present those findings, for example, a security investigator comes and does his investigation and finds out what the attacker did, then they will present uh, their findings to their management or write a blog post about it, for example, as we do in Dynatrace as well. And as, as I have done in, in Dynatrace as well, and we present those findings in a sequential order. So we describe that we found an attacker who did this activity followed by this activity. Then he penetrated the database, extracted data, and then we got the ransomware note that uh, asked money from us, for example. So it's like a sequential uh, steps that, that we see afterwards. And why we present it in that way, it's really easy to understand because it's like a time series activities. They are chronological order. You can understand what event caused which event, and it's like a sequence of things. Mm-hmm. The reality there is that um, if you are actually hunting for this investigation or doing threat hunting or investigating these things, you don't investigate it in a linear manner. You, you do it basically jumping around within an investigation. So, so imagine like, uh, well, you have a hunch that somebody has attacked you or you get some kind of alert, for example. Then you, you start investigating from the firewall logs, but you're not sure what you're actually looking for. So you move around laterally between different scenarios. Then you discover one point move uh, ahead to that uh, hypothesis, take some path down, let's say, as you see on the graph as well, you do some filtering, fetching some data and doing some stuff. Then you might find something which will then lead you back to the previous step and require you to take a, a totally new approach to your investigation. So you're basically moving around within your queries and things that you have done or what you have discovered. And based on the findings, you might go back three or four steps to just mm-hmm. start a totally new path. And um, the, the outcome of this uh, really messy investigation uh, is something that is then presented in a linear way afterwards, so mm-hmm. so, so to say. And yeah, your hypo- hypothesis always depends on your findings in your investigation. So you never know at the beginning where you're going to end up at the end, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And, and thank you so much for the reminder, because I have also written many blog posts in the past, not about security, but mainly about diagnosing performance issues. And you're completely yeah. right. You start somewhere and then you end up going different paths to find out more evidence. And in the end, you summarize everything very nicely and just focusing on the things that were really critical on that path. But I think you are explaining it really nicely here. The real work behind the scenes is not a linear path. It's a tree. And then along that tree, you have evidence that you collect. And then you sometimes go back and try another thing. And thank you. Well explained. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the feedback. And uh, yeah, and, and what I have discovered from the from the past uh, several years when I have been doing those kind of investigations and threat hunting and log analysis is that uh, we don't have the uh, I would say perfect tooling to do those kind of things because yeah, if you if you imagine traditional uh, log analysis tools, the best thing that you might get is like a history of your queries. So you see the queries that you have executed, but if you consider the same story that you just told, where you are jumping between between queries. And you're doing them in not the really mm-hmm. chronological order, but in, in some kind of logical order, let's say. Then then you might have a sequence, as you see, um, in the number of dots on the on the left side. Mm-hmm. So you do your one, two, three, four, five, for example. From the five, you do your sixth step. You discover something, go back to five and execute a new query. So you reach the seventh point. You discover something totally new, jump to the third point, execute mm-hmm. something, and you reach the eighth step or the ninth step on the tenth step. Mm-hmm. And then from the 10th step, we discover that, okay, I have to go back to five now. You go back yeah. to five, execute 11th and 12th. 
what happens now is that if you use that chronological order of, of executions or the query history, so to say, uh, which is linear, then you will end up with the results that as you see on your right. So you have your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven until 12 in a time ordered way. But if you look at your executions, uh, let's say two months later to understand what you actually did during this investigation, you have no understanding or no idea why did you jump uh, or how did you achieve the movement from the seventh query, which is like right after five, to the eighth query, which is connected to three. How did you like move from one query to another? What's the context there? You only see single chronological queries, but no context of the investigation. Mm -hmm. How did you reach that point? So it's really hard later to understand what you actually did. Mm -hmm. And to solve that exact problem, we created a new way of navigation within the investigation. Yeah, and now we'll, we'd like to show it uh, in a real life uh, demo, how, how it actually looks like or how does it make sense to, to see the yeah, real application. So mm -hmm. uh, just to go briefly over what you see here, here's the query window where you write your DQL queries. Here you see the results that we have in place and here is the tree. And, and I will go through some DQL queries just to show you how the tree will evolve. I will not go into details what I will do and why I'm investigating that case. It's just to generate the tree. But yeah, imagine that uh, you right now are seeing the, the AWS log groups. So the log groups from, from CloudWatch that we are ingesting to Dynatrace, mm -hmm. uh, quite many events here. So if you want to, let's say, investigate your uh, your AKS cluster, Kubernetes cluster logs, you just add a filter here, execute it, and see all the events here. Now, imagine that you would like to maybe understand which kind of, uh, of log streams uh, are being um, are being ingested to you. You can you can always uh, add like a summarization to your uh, add it to our next row to see what kind of uh, what kind of uh, interesting uh, things you have here. Let's say you can uh, you want to have only the cube audit things. You will add a filter here just to see only the audit related events mm -hmm. and. You can see basically all the interesting stuff that you that you have uh, related to your uh, Kubernetes audit. So if you would double click on any of the events, mm -hmm. you can see the the whole uh, whole uh, record in one screen. And as you see the little arrow here, or the little zoom button here on mm -hmm. a magnifying glass, when opening of that one, you will see the the full object of the JSON one. So even though it's 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 saved as a string. You mm -hmm. can basically see a structured chase on here to understand in a more better way what you are actually uh, seeing or or how does this object actually look like in in let's say real life or so and you you can access the same view from uh, from here as well if you if you click in mm -hmm. uh, inspect so mm -hmm. this is this is what we mean by the by by having the really detailed view about uh, what you have in grail you you can analyze it in a, in a much faster way than 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 maybe you used to mm -hmm. and uh, as you did before, you can always extract the fields. So, for example, if you would uh, want to extract only certain fields from your JSON object in DPL Architect that we have here as well, we can we can show the the, the use the out of the box Kubernetes audit pattern, for example, to extract only the the fields that you feel that you need in your investigation, or you can have the the, the whole object parsed into into smaller fields, for example. But again. This is just an investigation step without going even into too much detail about uh, about what TPL architect can do and then what the, what the query really actually is all about. What is really important here, or what I would like to emphasize in, in our current case, is that every time we have executed something in the investigator app, a new node is being created to this tree, mm -hmm. uh, which means that you have your whole history here accessible to you uh, in, in, in the exact moment as you need it. So. If you click on any of the nodes, you can access the query that you executed. You see the full result set as you executed it. And you can always come here and do your manipulation and do some kind of uh, continuous investigation or, or add a modification to your, uh, your, to your to your query to, to then branch further. So just following up the, the investigation that we have here, let's imagine that, uh, that you now extracted some of the fields and you would like to see what kind of interesting stuff did you have in your... Uh, in your Kubernetes audit logs. So let's see if it discovers something anomalous. We will extract some fields to a summarization based on source IP and only see the, the events that uh, either are unauthorized, so end result 401, or they don't have privileges to do those activities, so 403. So mm -hmm. yeah, as the result code. Executing that, 
we will see a really cool summarization. Mm -hmm. You can do in-play sorting without executing DQL, and you see that, okay, we have some suspicious activities here. And this is actually something or the place where we can show how the, the evidence come to play. So you have, uh, out of the box, you have uh, the IOCs or indication of compromise, uh, evidence collection where you can add any kind of strings or, or tokens or trace IDs or whatnot, which might be related to your, to your evidence. And you can use them later when creating DQL filters uh, in a bulked way. And we have provided two out of the box collections, suspicious IPs and safe IPs, but you can have a number of different collections for your evidence that you can create customly. So for example, we see here that, okay, we have somebody who has done from external IP, we have somebody who has tried to fetch secrets, but is unauthorized. So I would imagine being a scanner, we have to definitely take a look at this. Let's just right click and add it to a suspicious IP. We see the list populated here. But the more interesting thing here is that we have some internal IP address who is fetching ports and doesn't have rights to it. So it might be something suspicious. Somebody might have been infected our port or the port might be compromised for some reason, or maybe the image in the port is compromised. We, we have to take a look at that. So let's just add it as a new evidence, as a, a compromised port, for example. Mm -hmm. And we will now have to investigate further what did this compromised port uh, do in, uh, in, our, uh, in our environment. So if you would now like to go and, uh, and understand what has been done, remember we had the first query where we saw actually all our AWS log groups. Mm -hmm. So, okay, here we had our audit logs, but we also had VPC flow logs. So to understand, for example, what the port has done in the network or what kind of connections has it initiated, we would have to take a look at this. So jumping back here and modifying this and executing the query, what will happen is that a new branch is now mm -hmm. created. So if you see that um, we had the initial query mm -hmm. here, which is still mm -hmm. persisting and all the results are always, all, always here. And the second one we executed is, is still here where we had the cluster logs in present with the results that hand. Now we have a third a node here or the second branch, which we can now rename, say that these are our, our flow logs, for example. Let's see, flow logs. And we can add a custom color to it just to recognize it later in a tree since we will have a really comprehensive tree. We can just start and go ahead and start investigating our logs. So again, doing a quick analysis here using safe patterns again, AWS flow logs and extracting stuff here, we can see basically uh, all the fields from our AWS flow logs being extracted. A new mm -hmm. node was created into our tree here and we can continue our ana analysis. And now if you would like to see what kind of network connections were initiated by our, by our suspicious port, but we don't quite remember what the port IP address was, then here at the evidence bar, we can click on the, on the evidence menu and choose filter and select the field which has the IP type and add automatically a filter to our DQL. So in this case, we would like to see, show me all the packets where the source address has been our suspicious port. And adding this filter will automatically populate it into GQL as well. So mm -hmm. all the connections that you see here are originating from that one. That's pretty so, nice. That means in the UI, I get some help so that I can use that particular field. And we know the data type, it's an IP address. And then the UI already knows, or the app already knows what other fields uh, that match that data type are in the last result. So that's, exactly. that's perfect. Yeah, that's really nice. Wow. Yeah, and if you would have like a summarization to oh. see that, let's now sort based on the, uh, we, or let's let's now summarize based on the destination addresses mm -hmm. and based on the protocol, we can see that, okay, this this uh, this this IP address has done some really suspicious stuff towards those IP addresses and especially DNS. So protocol 17, mm -hmm. I know that means UDP and 53 is DNS port. So, mm -hmm. uh, and 202,000 uh, different requests towards the DNS within a really short period of time, time so three mm -hmm. hours, it might be mean that there might be something suspicious going on so we can investigate further. Mm -hmm. But again, at maybe in this point, you would now, okay, let's let's add a different color to this one. Uh, let's mark it as an orange one. And uh, let's see, but maybe we would like to now understand uh, that maybe there have been some other sources as well who have done something suspicious. So let's remove the filter now. Um, let, let's do some, some other kind of magic and continue our... Uh, our um, investigation, okay, reject and accept. Let's only see the reject ones executed again. 
uh, and then maybe we would like to actually see the, the the thing sorted in the scaling order to understand what kind of activities have been done here, mm -hmm. executing once again, the tree keeps on growing. And now we see that, okay, there has been some kind of suspicious uh, activity going on here as well. So destination port 30,311. Okay, that sounds suspicious. Maybe we should investigate that as well. Let's mm -hmm. add it to... Um, new hunch which we shall investigate further but at the same time wait let's see if we can actually find something similar for our suspicious pod ip as well so maybe we can go back here where we analyzed the the suspicious port that we investigated and we would like to expand this query here now being on that node we can actually move around in the tree mm -hmm. and when right clicking on the node or opening the menu we can see the last query here as well so we mm -hmm. can just copy maybe the last portion that we would like to use in this query, add it to here, and now execute it for this IP address as well, continuing our previous investigation, executing it, and you see again a new branch evolving here. Yeah. So basically, as much hypothesis and ideas you might generate during your investigation, you can always go back to the previous step, modify the query, and the new branch is being created while still keeping the integrity of the previous queries and the result sets, which, which is a really, really awesome thing in my mind. Yeah, because, because you... Yeah, you never have to like copy your queries or save it to text editors or 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 confluence or wherever you would actually track your your queries you can always revisit and understand what went on especially when you have to like show it to others later on or demonstrate it and yeah uh, mm -hmm. keeping the context mm -hmm. so for me uh, this is a really cool thing because you can like what i've done so far i've used notebooks and basically started sequentially in a notebook what you know from one query refined it to the next to the next but you are now giving me a much more natural way of investigating data because you're always branching off i really like the fact that you can save data as evidence you can reuse that data you can go back all the results are stored so this now in the security investigator i think it's called a case i can see a new case that means mm -hmm. you can create different cases and then everything in their store the coloring is nice because you can then mark certain branches of the tree with a color that says hey this is where i found something specific or you can give it different names to individual nodes it's uh, very powerful yeah and additionally imagine that now you would now like to see only a certain amount of ips so let's say that you have those mm -hmm. eight ip addresses you would like to now investigate further selecting all of those right clicking mm -hmm. here and adding filter it will add all those uh, selected nice. IPs as, as a filter, as a bunch, as a bulk filter, so to say. Or you can do similar to add them to your investigation. So adding all those to your, let's say, safe IPs will just populate your safe IPs evidence list here. So mm -hmm. you can do like bulk actions uh, with, with, their, with their selections as well without actually needing to do them one by one or mm -hmm. copying. Mm -hmm. And then as, as, I, as I showed before as well, but I would like to really emphasize that if you would like have, uh, let's say, some kind of... Um, or let's even add, uh, um, take a longer snippet here. Imagine having a really long content here. If you want to see the full content, you can always come and inspect it. All the long text as well, you can see in a separate model and you can actually understand what's written here. We are showing all the non-printable characters as well. If you would have like stack traces, which are multiple mm -hmm. lines and so on, which is a really cool thing. And if you would like to filter out only based on the portion of the thing, you can only select the portion that you would like to filter on and adding that one to the filter mm -hmm. will not add the whole uh, line or field yeah. to the filter, but only the portion here. And using the contains keyword will show you only these lines that contain this kind of evidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the same time, when you are clicking on the right click on the whole field, or let's say on the object ref and filter here, then it would add uh, the full value and the equals, mm -hmm. not the contains uh, yeah. command, which, which which again provides the flexibility and the speed when doing your investigations. You don't have yeah. to do them manually or copy or, or yeah, type them uh, one by one, so to say. Yeah, very powerful. It seems you've investigated or invested a lot in making the UI experience as you're manipulating queries super easy. And now I also understand your earlier comment when you said, while you built this for a security investigation use case, this can be applied to any use case where you are trying to analyze logs and extracting data uh, out of logs. Um, yeah, perfect. Well, it's very powerful. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, as I have been working as, as uh, an, a system administrator as well, I can imagine, as you said, that uh, analyzing observability data or debugging something in the production environment where you also mm -hmm. have to analyze logs, it makes perfect sense to use a similar tool. 
you might not leverage all the things like you don't you might not use suspicious ip addresses or all the automations that we will have in place in this application in the future let's say automatic data enrichment and so on mm -hmm. which is not maybe that relevant to observability use cases but you don't have to use those parts you can still use our really awesome navigational components and uh, the quick filters that we have and this will i will say will provide to be beneficial for any kind of use case so no restrictions done here on, on, yeah. on the on the rows and use cases where you can use it yeah anybody yeah. who finds it useful they're welcome to use and give feedback yeah, and I think, as you said, it's also not restricted to logs only. I would assume any type of data that is in Grail and that can be metrics, it can be logs, it can be traces and whatever else events uh, we will have in Grail. So that's really good. The same capabilities on any type of observability data to speed up your investigation, whether it's security related, whether you're hunting a performance problem. Really nice. Yes, definitely. And uh, yeah, as you might have noticed, we, we we still have some minor UI glitches, So, but we will guarantee that these will be all solved by April when we have the GA. Mm -hmm. So this is just a teaser to show what is up for, mm -hmm. for, for uh, yeah, what, what is coming in April and what yeah. we are actually created here in Tallinn Lab as well. And then, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hopefully it will find traction and it's usable for, for all our customers as well. Yeah. We have put a lot of effort and thought into this and I hope that we will speed up all the investigations and provide value for our customers. Yeah, perfect. Pete, is that it or anything else? I think that's it. There was a lot of stuff already. Yeah, it was a lot of stuff. And I, I, I'm I, fully aware that I I, I maybe talked too, too fast at some point. So I hope that it was still understandable and I didn't rush through anything. No. But uh, but yeah, we can. I, I hope that we can do like a longer demo at some point as well, where we can go through an actual use case and then show step by step how those things are used in practice in the real world scenario as well. But hopefully this sneak preview was 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 interesting as well. Very nice, yeah. So folks, um, you know, this is coming in April. Uh, it's, I think it's a great way to see what's coming, what we're working on. Do us a favor, check out the video. Once it's available, try it out. And Tit, definitely I will have you back because there will be new stuff constantly uh, built into these apps. And so we'll have another update later in the year. But with this, I want to say thank you. And uh, until the next time. Thank you so much. Thank you.